Hi and welcome, I'm Gavin Lon. In this video, we are going to look at some of the great features and improvements that are due to be released with .NET 7. We'll cover these aspects thematically. For more details of what to expect with the release of .NET 7, I've included relevant links below in the description of this video. This video will give you a broad overview of some of the improvements and new features that stand out to me that will be included in the official release of .NET 7, which is due to be released in November of this year, 2022. Since the release of .NET 5 on November the 10th, 2020, Microsoft committed to a new release of .NET in November of each year moving forward. So .NET 6 was released on the 8th of November, 2021. And in November of this year, we are expecting the release of .NET 7. .NET 5 was what's known as a current release and .NET 6 was what's known as a long-term support release, LTS release. Note that there is no quality difference between long-term support releases, LTS releases, and current releases. The only difference is the length of support. LTS releases get free support and patches for three years. Current releases get free support and patches for 18 months. At the time of creating this video, the latest preview release of .NET 7 is Preview 6. I've included links below in the description to blog posts that contain details of each of the preview releases of .NET 7. The official release of .NET 7 will be a current release, which means it will be supported for 18 months. The release of .NET 8, due to be released in November 2023, will be a long-term support release, which means it will be supported for three years. Preview releases are typically not supported, but they are offered for public testing ahead of the final release. A preview or release candidate release are supported through Microsoft Developer Support only if they're specifically designated Go Live. A brief history of .NET. This channel has released several videos on the history of .NET. The first video I released on .NET is a video on the difference between .NET Framework and .NET Core. I've since released a video on the .NET 5 release and a video on the .NET 6 release. In each video, I've provided foundational content on the evolution of .NET. Please see a link to a playlist below in the description to view the videos released by this channel on the progression of .NET. So in this video, I'll give a brief overview of the history of .NET before we look at the new features due to be released in .NET 7 and also the improvements and optimizations that are due to be released in .NET 7. .NET Framework was released February the 13th, 2002. At the time, it was a revolutionary release for Microsoft as it fundamentally changed the environment in which Microsoft applications run. .NET applications run on what can be described as a virtual machine, similar to how Java applications run on the JVM, Java Virtual Machine. The virtual machine provided in the .NET framework is known as the CLR, Common Language Runtime. .NET Framework, however, can only run on Windows platforms and requires an installation of all the base class libraries shipped with the .NET framework. .NET Core was released on the 27th of June, 2016. It is a free open source managed computer software framework that is cross-platform. It can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS operating systems. Only the base class libraries that are needed by an application need to be shipped with that application. So it is a more agile version of .NET when compared to the .NET framework. So .NET framework and .NET core is being supported concurrently. This resulted in the fragmentation of .NET. To alleviate this fragmentation, the .NET standard was introduced. The first steps to properly unify .NET under one umbrella, as it were, came with the release of .NET 5 on November the 10th, 2020. The release of .NET 6 came approximately one year later, on the 8th of November, 2021, which shipped with many great enhancements, but most significantly, .NET 6 further cemented the unification of .NET. So, .NET 6 is unified free open source software that is cross-platform and agile. It is an extremely versatile framework 
in terms of the types of applications that can run on .NET, and the performance of .NET has been optimized for the cloud. It is also versatile in terms of the number of platforms on which it can run. .NET 6 is supported on multiple operating systems. Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, iOS, tvOS, including Mac OS Silicon and Windows ARM 64. So what is coming with .NET 7? .NET MAUI. There is significant investment in .NET MAUI for .NET 7. .NET Multi-Platform App UI, .NET MAUI, is a cross-platform framework for creating native mobile and desktop apps with c Sharp and XAML. Using .NET MAUI, you can develop apps that can run on Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows from a single shared code base. .NET MAUI is open source and is the evolution of Xamarin Forms. With the release of .NET 7, you can expect performance improvements and better tooling in .NET MAUI. Cloud Native and Containers Cloud Native Computing is an approach in software development that utilizes cloud computing to build and run scalable applications in modern, dynamic environments such as public, private, and hybrid clouds. So, common technologies used in building cloud-native applications are, for example, Docker containers, a set of platform-as-a-service products that use OS-level virtualization to deliver software in packages called containers. Kubernetes, an open-source container orchestration system for automating software development, scaling, and management. And microservices, a collection of loosely coupled services that run inside Docker containers. There'll be a broad set of investments in cloud native and containers in .NET 7 in terms of, for example, simplifying authentication, improvement of performance in terms of startup performance and runtime performance, and better integration with containers. There's also investment in better alignment with the Orleans technology. Orleans is a cross-platform framework for building robust, scalable, distributed applications. Orleans scales with a single on-premises server to globally distributed, highly available applications in the cloud. Orleans uses the virtual actor model where grains serve as the fundamental building blocks of Orleans applications. Grains are entities comprising user-defined identity, behavior, and state. So with .NET 7, there will be investment and better alignment of Orleans with .NET. Modernizing existing .NET applications. With .NET 7, there is investment to make it easier to upgrade older .NET applications to modern .NET applications. For example, you may wish to upgrade an old ASP.NET MVC application to an ASP.NET Core MVC application. For .NET 7, Microsoft is making investments into its upgrade assistant to make these types of upgrades easier. The Upgrade Assistant can, for example, change code written for older .NET environments to be appropriate for modern .NET environments. It will also be made easier to upgrade applications in sections rather than upgrading the entire application at once. There are framework investments for application modernization in .NET 7. Abstractions will be provided that, for example, allow the sharing of parts of the ASP.NET side of the application with parts of the ASP.NET Core side of the application. So the upgrade can be done in an incremental fashion rather than all at once, which may not be a practical solution. .NET 6 contained many performance improvements. Investments are being made in .NET 7 to make .NET even faster and more efficient. ASP.NET Core, HTTP 3 will become part of the .NET framework in .NET 7. HTTP 3 is a new standard in development that will affect how web browsers and servers communicate. Unlike previous versions, which relied on the well-established TCP, HTTP 3 uses QUIC, a multiplexed transport protocol built on UDP. HTTP 3 includes significant upgrades for user experience, including performance, reliability, and security. Minimal API. Minimal APIs are architected to create HTTP APIs with minimal dependencies. 
They are ideal for microservices and apps that want to include only the minimum files, features, and dependencies in ASP.NET Core. Minimal APIs provide developers with the advantage of less ceremony when setting up web API applications. They are lightweight. Minimal APIs hook into ASP.NET Core's hosting and routing capabilities and allow you to build fully functioning APIs with just a few lines of code. In .NET 7, Minimal API will be more consistent in terms of what can be achieved when compared to web APIs that use the traditional MVC design pattern. One new feature in .NET 7 is providing a way to group Minimal APIs together with a common root prefix so that they represent one part of the API space, as it were. A developer can take the APIs and put them in different files so that it is more manageable from a project and code management perspective. Currently, you can apply action filters to controllers in a web API component. The ability to implement such code for cross-cutting concerns will now be available for minimal APIs. The concept of endpoint filters will be available in .NET 7 to apply the same cross-cutting functionality that, for example, action filters provide for controllers. GRPC GRPC was created by Google to speed up data transmission between microservices and other systems that need to interact with each other. With .NET 7, there is investment in GRPC JSON transcoding. The feature allows GRPC services to be called like RESTful HTTP APIs with JSON requests and responses. So for example, this will make it easy for JavaScript code running within a browser to call a gRPC service. Signal R. Signal R is a free and open source software library for Microsoft ASP.NET that allows server code to send asynchronous notifications to client-side web applications. Signal R was built for high performance and is one of the fastest real-time frameworks around. In .NET 7, there will be support for strongly typed clients and returning results from client invocations. A new client source generator for Signal R will be included. The Signal R client source generator generates strongly typed sending and receiving code based on interfaces that the developer can define. .NET 7 will come with various improvements to the Razor compiler to improve performance resilience and to facilitate improved tooling. Blazor. Broad improvements will be made to Blazor. For example, mixed mode AOT, ahead of time compilation, will allow for certain assemblies to be ahead of time compiled rather than the entire application needing to be ahead of time compiled. When ahead of time compilation is implemented, this makes the overall size of the application to be downloaded to the browser much larger. So although runtime speeds are increased for the application, the file size is much larger. Enabling mixed mode means that parts of the application can be optimized for speed. Those parts of the application that require greater speed can be ahead of time compiled, leaving the rest of the application to be interpreted. So speed can be increased where it counts and a balance is maintained between less size of the application and the benefit of speed optimizations. Most browsers are now capable of facilitating multi-threading, so .NET 7 will take advantage of this and will provide multi-threading to Blazor WebAssembly applications. Web crypto simply means that cryptographic functionality available in browsers can be leveraged from Blazor applications. With the release of .NET 7, there will be enhancements in hot reload support. Data binding improvements, more flexible pre-rendering, pre-rendering Razor files into HTML allows parsing of static files, which for example makes SEO, search engine optimization, effective in Blazor applications. More control over the life cycle of Blazor server circuits. Improved support for micro front ends. Micro front ends are a new pattern where web application UIs, front ends, are composed from semi-independent fragments that can be built by several teams using different technologies. Support for custom elements is an exciting feature where you can shrink wrap, as it were, a Blazor component 
in a standard custom HTML element. This means you could reuse the relevant custom element created in a Blazor application within, for example, an Angular or a React application. So that's a super exciting feature. MVC.NET will include improvements made to endpoint routing, link generation, and parameter binding. Orleans. The ASP.NET core and Orleans teams are investigating ways to further align and integrate the Orleans distributed programming model with ASP.NET core. Orleans 4 will ship alongside .NET and focuses on simplicity, maintainability, and performance, including human-readable stream identities and a new optimized version-tolerant serializer. I'd like to tell you about Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a platform used by millions that provides a fun and interactive way of learning STEM subjects. At Brilliant, you'll practice real-world problem-solving that helps you train your critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Every problem comes with a step-by-step -step solution that helps you understand the reason for each step. Courses are available for all knowledge levels and all ages, from 10 to 110. So you'll almost certainly find something that interests you. The concept is first explained and why it actually matters. The intuitive ideas behind the topics, like algebra, statistics, or algorithms, and more, are taught. You'll come to understand how STEM actually works, and how it is relevant to your everyday life. Personally, I'm really looking forward to following this course on Python. Python is an excellent object-oriented programming language, one of the best languages used in data science applications. This course on algorithms looks great. Understanding how certain algorithms work, coupled with a good knowledge of certain data structures, is essential for professional developers as well as aspiring developers. All of Brilliant's courses are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. This is an excellent platform that almost anyone can use to increase their knowledge on STEM subjects. I highly recommend signing up for your one-week free trial with Brilliant. By signing up after clicking the appropriate link that I've included below in the description, and if you convert to an annual subscription once your one-week free trial period has completed, you can get 20% off the annual subscription price. So this is a great deal offered by Brilliant to the viewers of this channel. This video provides a brief overview of some of the features and improvements to expect with the next official release of .NET, which is due to be released in November of this year. .NET 7 will be a current release, meaning it will be supported free of charge for 18 months and will contain many great new features, many performance and optimization improvements. With this new release of .NET and the commitment to release a new version of .NET every year moving forward makes it a great time to be a .NET developer. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so as to be notified when new content is released. I really enjoy reading your comments, so please feel free to leave a comment below in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you and take care. <laughs>